grid of three is problem 7-11. It says write equations for the exponential functions with horizontal asymptotes at y equals zero and passing through the following pairs of points. So we have a set of points for A and a set of points for B. So I already started doing letter A. This is letter A. So it said it, it's exponential, and we know that exponential is y equals a times b to the x. Um, we also know that we can have h and k. I left h out. I want to let h be 0 here. And k. They said the horizontal asymptote is 0, so that is going to be, um, k is going to be 0, because we know the exponentials look like, sometimes they'll look like this. And so they usually do, the parent function has the horizontal asymptote at zero. So we don't need that k on there. So we're just going to use a model of y equals a times b to the x plus zero, which is just y equals a times b to the x. So if I, so what I do is I grab the, both of the ordered pairs that they gave me, and I'm going to fill in y equals a times b to the x. But for y, I've substituted, just so you can see what I did. For y, I substituted 99, because that's a y. And for um, x, I substituted 2. And I just did the same thing either. Uh, here, it's y equals a times b to the, that's x, the 6. So now I have a system of equations. I have these two equations here. So what I want to do is, you can do it any way you want. If you want to do um, do something where you do equal values or substitution or elimination, but in this case, the, the easiest way is to divide the, the equation with the B that has the higher exponent by the other equation. So I'm going to divide this equation by this equation. And you might think, why are you allowed to divide an equation by another equation? And it's because since 99 is equal to a times b squared, it, I'm just dividing both sides of this first equation, this equation over here, by 99. So I'm allowed to do it. It works great. Um, the a's will cancel out because a divided by a is just 1. Um, b to the 6th divided by b squared is just going to be b to the 4th. You can just you, uh, subtract the exponent. And then this number, I don't know what it is. I better get my calculator. But I can just divide it on my calculator. Oh, it's 81. That's nice. And now I can take the fourth root of both sides. Now, I don't really know what the fourth root of 81 is, but I'm going to try guessing 3, because I think um, 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81. I mean, 27 times 3. Yeah, so it's 3. So b equals 3. So I know b, and then I just want to plug it in. Maybe I'll plug it in right here. So I got uh, 99 equals A times, remember B was 3. 3 squared is 9. So A must equal 11 because that would give 9 times A equals 99. And divide both sides by 9, I get 11. So then I just write my answer as uh, Y equals A times b, which is 3, to the x. So the answer is y equals 11 times 3 to the x. So now I'm on letter b. I'm going to do letter b. So letter b gave me uh, negative 1 and 50. And then over here it gave me 2 and 25.6. So I know that y equals a times b to the x. So I'm going to plug in y for y. 
and x for x. And same thing here. I know that y equals a times b to the x because that's the exponential form and 25.6 equals b squared. And I think I would even, even on this one, I'll still use my same method. I have these two equations and I want to do a system of equations. And so I'm just going to divide this equation by this equation. You could do it the other way around, it would be fine. Um, and you could, you don't have to do it this way. Oh, I lost my A. You don't have to do it this way. There's other ways that it can be done. But this, I think, is going to be the most simple way to do it. So this thing is just going to be some kind of decimal. I don't really know what it is yet. Um, here I've got b squared divided by b to the negative 1, and you subtract the exponent, so it's 2 minus negative 1, so that's going to be b cubed. b cubed is going to end up being whatever, 25.0, uh, 25.6 oh, 25 divided by 50 is. Oh, you know what, I kind of, hmm. My calculator likes to give uh, fractions, and I like the, the fraction because I think those might be perfect cubes. Like I might be able to figure it out without having to use my calculator. Like four, I think, I think the cube root of 64 is going to be four, and I think the cube root of 125 is five. And I can check it by going four times four is 16 times four, that does make 64. And then 5 times 5 is 25 times 5 again. Yeah. So that's B. So now that I know what B is, I can plug it back in to find A. So I guess I can plug it in right here. 50 equals. Now remember when something's raised to the negative 1 power, then it means the reciprocal. So it's 5 fourths instead of 4 fifths because it said b to the negative 1. And then to get a by itself, I'm going to multiply both sides by 4 fifths. And then I'm going to do some fraction math. 5 goes into itself once. It goes into 50 10 times. 4 times 10 is 40. So that gives me y equals a, which is 40, times b, which is 4 fifths, to the x. Now, some people get confused and they think that they can, like, cross-reduce these or something, but you can't because order of operations, because this fraction here is the base of this exponent. So you can't do anything with the 40 and the 4 fifths. So you're just stuck with this. 